Welcome back to Maths with Mr Duffield. I am the aforementioned Mr Duffield. This is a question set to my depths on radians and specifically solving um, trigonometric equations in terms of radians. Um, the fundamentals are pretty straightforward, but when I start looking at these um, ranges of values here, things get a little bit trickier. Let's take a look at this first part of question three. Solve for x, where x is between negative pi and positive pi radians, giving your answer exactly where appropriate. My first part, cos 2x equals root 3 over 2. Let's write that up. Cos 2x equals the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so I'm dealing with the graph of, of cos here. All right, if I'm going to make sense of this, and I want to make sure it's it's sketched nice and clearly here. Cos looks a bit like this, ranging between 0 and 2 pi. So that's got to be pi. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm labeling this stuff in terms of radians. Uh, got to make sure that we understand how to convert between degrees and radians in order for this to make any sense. So if that's not the case, that's what you need to double back and do. I'm also going to go into negatives here. And that's because... Um, the question, the range in this question goes between negative pi and positive pi. So it just makes sense to extend this um, cos line into the negative in this particular case. Okay, that's the cos line. Um, root 3 over 2. Let's actually take a look quickly at what, what is the value of root 3 over 2. 0.866, so very close to the maximum value of this graph, uh, positive 1. So, so I'm going to draw a line going through what we approximate as uh, root 3 over 2, just there on the on the y-axis. I'm looking for the points where this line intersects with the cos line, and I read down and get me some values. And there, as you can see, there are multiple values here, and it's possible to work them all out simply from having discovered what one of them are. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's obviously the graph, there's intersections, there's there's thinking about the fact that x has got to be between negative pi and, and positive pi radians. We're going to come to all of that. But first, uh, let's, let's deal with the algebra now that we've got a visual representation of, of what's going on here. To get x on its own, we're going to take inverse cos of both sides. That in, that, in essence, cancels out that cos and just leaves 2x. And then on the right-hand side, the inverse of root 3 over 2. Let's work that out, shall we? Inverse cos of root 3 over 2 gives me 2x equals 1 over 6 pi. Okay? So, effectively, the value of 2x there, 1 over 6 pi. All right? Now, if I think about the symmetricality of this cos graph, the fact that everything's basically a mirror image of itself within this pattern, well then I can pretty quickly work out that this negative value on this side is going to be negative 1 over 6 pi. Okay? Simply because it's the same distance away from the y-axis. I haven't sketched it particularly well, it must be said. Uh, it's the same distance away from the y-axis on the other side. Mirror image. And similarly, you might be able to think, well, if I were to imagine there being a y-axis over here, well, there's a, there's a gap of a, of a sixth pi to get from 2 pi to this. So this solution here is 2 pi minus 1 over 6 pi, because that's that gap between 2 pi and this point here. And then similarly, over here, I hope you can get to see what I'm, what I'm representing here, the distance between negative 2 pi and this point is going to be minus 2 pi plus 1 sixth of pi. You see that? So these values here, all of these four, are interesting in that I can find them all simply through having done a little bit of algebra to work out this. Now, of course, listen, that's the value of 2x. I don't want the value of 2x in this question. I just want the value of x. So I'm going to do that by, well, in this algebra case, it's very simple. You just half both sides. I end up with 1 over 12 pi. 
You can write that as pi over 12 if you like. It takes up a bit less room and it's a little bit more elegant. I, I don't know. So effectively, the true solution here is pi over 12. But if that's the case, well, then all of these other solutions that we found up here, they need to be halved as well. So I'm going to do that. The, the, all of the solutions I'm going to come up with, minus 2, oh, excuse me, minus 2 pi, let's get out my calculator and start working these out, plus 1 over 6 pi, that's minus 11 over 6 pi. But let me write that down. Uh, and then I guess over here, conversely, in, in a similar manner, that's got to be 11 over 6 pi. But all of these, just as we've done down here with halving 2x to become x, all of these need to be halved as well. So my final solutions for, for this question are uh, minus 11 over 12 pi, because that's been halved, a sixth halves to a twelfth. And then minus 1 over 6 pi becomes minus 1 over 12 pi. And then 1 over 12 pi we had before and then 11 over 12 pi on the other side as well. Those are all of the values of x for this particular question. Okay? And uh, just to make sure, we have our limits up here. They've got to be between negative pi and positive pi. Well, this is very close to minus pi, but it isn't quite there. This is very close to positive pi, but it isn't quite there. That looks like the solutions for this particular question. So, what did I need to know in order to, to solve this question? Well, first of all, I needed to know how to do inverse cosine to isolate x and then, and then halve it. That's the core of what's going on here, and that's actually fairly simple. But we also need to know how this graph behaves, how many solutions there are going to be around it, and then scaling them down, in this case by halving, to work out all of the solutions that lie within the range that we're provided with, okay? That is the element of um, this question that's tricky for me. All of the other questions you can effectively deal with, let's take a look at question two here. Tan squared x equals a third. So if you square root both sides of this, you, you get tan x equals one over nine, right? And, and there's gonna be two values, one positive and one negative. You're going to deal with that in exactly the same way as you did for this question, just with the tan graph and with two possible solutions, positive and negative a ninth. And, and this question here, 2 sine squared x equals sine x plus 1. Well, if I rearrange this one, I end up with 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. That is a quadratic that you can solve. So all of the questions that uh, increase in complexity are all using the skills that you already possess mathematically. But it always comes down to this central idea. If you need me to go through any of those other parts, please do let me know. Um, I'll leave you to it. God bless you. Keep up the good work. And for goodness sake, get your work uploaded to Teams. I'll talk to you very soon.